You know, we believe that there needs to be some type of local hiring component and also the development of small businesses as we do these mega capital investments. Another alarming trend is we're seeing that usage per account over the last 25 years is declining. So even though we may have an 8% rate increase, we're not going to get an 8% increase in revenue. And so that's an issue and a challenge that I think throughout the Midwest, I think uh, other cities are seeing the same problem. So as it relates to our wet weather challenge, uh, in Cincinnati, we are in the top in the nation in terms of the top five of combined sewer overflows. And so how do we deal with that and make sure that we're competing or at least we're meeting the requirements of our consent decree? Nationally, our infrastructure all the way around, public infrastructure uh, has a, a failing, close to a failing grade. And I think we've all seen this, that there is a funding gap. But what, uh, what, what, our, what our current grade means is that our systems are below standard and that we have uh, conditions and, and capacity issues that where we have parts of our system that are in risk, uh, a position of failure. And we have to be able to deal with that. So. We know that there's a funding gap. I think that uh, the congressman just spoke to that in, in terms of what that is and what that means. But you have US EPA talking about it. You have the Congressional Budget Office talking about it. But there is a significant budget gap. And if we don't fix that and deal with that right now, it's only going to get worse. And so by 2035, a lot of communities are going to really see the impact of that going forward. So affordability is a big issue, uh, even with the funding gap, we still, as utilities, we have to build, and we have to do things that are gonna be sustainable, and we have to do things that are going to be uh, efficient as we move forward. So, as I mentioned before, the rate piece, the media is always uh, uh, wanting to do stories about rate increases and, and what that problem, and how that's a problem. Uh, we're always in the news, but I look at, these programs as an opportunity, uh, and if we have the opportunity, we, we must have the will to do the right thing. And so will must be all, always be the, the, the dominant partner uh, to balance the scales going forward. So our formula, basically our motto is, is that if we're going to leverage an investment, we have to make sure that we're making an investment that's gonna meet the vision of the future uh, for the community. Uh, and we have to understand the current conditions in the community that we're doing work in. So our formula, formula is, is how do we redo the math? How do we take a federal consent decree and a three and a half billion dollar investment and how do we make that, turn that into a sustainable utility as well as a livable, walkable community uh, where we're doing work? So we wanna bring solutions that foster historical water, bringing that historical water well from below ground to above ground. I think that's one of our goals so that the community can see, but we're meeting the US EPA requirements for providing low cost solutions uh, and we're creating a new class of green jobs and improving water quality. Uh, so our vision basically is, is you have to build the right project, uh, make sure that we're bringing something forward that is gonna be more costly and bring some community benefits and balance water quality as we deal with uh, controlling uh, combined sewer overflows. This is a project we're doing in Cincinnati uh, that we think is going to uh, be in the neighborhood and, 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 and meet, uh, or should, should I say, leave a legacy for the next generation of the community that we're doing work. Uh, and as I said, trying to create an amenity that's going to be a vision for the future community. It also is going to allow value creation as it relates to uh, private side action. Uh, once we make sustainable infrastructure investments, we think that that's going to promote uh, affordable housing to follow, uh, mass transit development and other economic development that will happen uh, after we make a foundation of sustainable infrastructure investment. We also have a philosophy of investing in our workforce uh, making sure that we understand that there's a, a, a certain amount of direct construction jobs that are associated with each project, our Lick Run project and our Lower Mill Creek Partial Remedy, for example. Uh, there's a thousand jobs that will be created because of that uh, project, direct construction jobs. And so we have a local hiring requirement where a certain percentage of those local jobs need to go to local workforce. And so uh, we think that's very important going forward. 
And uh, this kind of gives you a snapshot of some of the uh, labor craft areas uh, where the work is going to be occurring. So we also have an apprenticeship program where we're developing uh, local workforce to be qualified as operators and drivers and laborers to be able to meet that requirement as we are rolling out this 20 to 30 year capital program, folks can have a career uh, doing work in Cincinnati. We also are developing small business. Uh, we have a, a policy where over the last three years we have uh, utilized uh, small businesses and growing small businesses in our operation and we've spent $75 million uh, in uh, the category of small business uh, utilization. And so we think that's very important as we do uh, these mega capital programs as well. We're also partnering with our public school system to develop a youth initiative uh, where we're bringing uh, public high school students into our organizations. And our goal is to transform the youth into young professionals, uh, build partnerships with the school districts, and expand career and educational opportunities, uh, and create a model youth training program that can be adopted globally. Uh, as uh, others are doing these major capital improvement programs. Our intern academy, uh, last year we had 75 students uh, that we brought in in the summer and integrated them within our utility. And we think that that's going to be beneficial not only to the utility, but beneficial to the youth as we move forward, uh, as they move forward in their careers. So our vision is, is that we consider current economic conditions, we address our wet weather challenge, and we develop an integrated solution that maintains the vision for the future community and invest in our workforce. And so those are the strategies that we're using in Cincinnati. Thank you.